Our scripture reading today is taken from Isaiah 55, reading verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 55, reading verse 1 to 3. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread or your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ears and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Oceans are 
morning and happy Sabbath. Very blessed to be with you this morning here. Uh, our pastor, Pastor Jose, today as called Pepper Church, is preaching, and our first elder is as Stafford Church. So we're blessed, you know, worshiping the Lord all over. So God's good. Uh, today at 4 o'clock, we'd like to remind our youth, we have the youth meeting at 4 o'clock at the church here, the sanctuary. So please, if you'd like to come at 4 o'clock. And I think it's a beautiful day today. It's about 80 degree. Egypt is about 100 degree. So, but good, we're cold here, so God is good, you know. Let us ask the Lord before we start. So, Our Father in heaven, we ask the presence of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to translate every word and open our hearts and minds to can listen to the message this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, today we are talking about Isaiah 55, the great invitation. Great invitation. And what is invitation? Invitation is to invite someone to an event. Like, for example, tomorrow we have the Aging Parents Program. So the church is inviting to the community for an event. So you expect something, invitation. Or someone invites you for a meal or for a birthday. So there is a reason for the invitation. So at, as we read, remind you the verse again in Isaiah 55, 1 to 3, is what we'll be talking this morning. We read the first verse, Ho, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So here is the, an open invitation from the Lord is calling us to come. Isaiah starting 55 for invitation. So you need to pray about it today. Are you ready to accept that invitation? Before we go on, who invited us or what is the reason of the invitation? Sorry, the slide just go back. It should be like this. Sorry. So if you go in with me in Isaiah 53, verses 4, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed his uh, stricken smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was pierced for our iniquities. And so on and keep, keep continuing Isaiah 53, building the foundation, who is inviting us and why are we invited? In fact, he's saying the Savior, Jesus Christ, he is the one inviting us. And he continue in chapter 54, giving like what kind of invitation. The Lord Jesus Christ, he came, and Isaiah was about 700 years before Christ come and die. He prophesied that Christ will come and die because of you and me. And he did, and in Isaiah 54, he explains that Christ took the guilt for us. Then in Isaiah 55, he's giving us the invitation. Invitation to come. We will be speaking about, speaking about three points this morning. Who are invited? Is it an open invitation or certain people? What are they offered? What are they told to do in order to get it? So first one, who are invited? Again, if you read in the verse here, who has uh, 55? Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. So who are invited here? The thirst. The question, are you thirsty this morning? You know, let's speak about the physical thirst flower. First, you know, outside it's about 80 degrees. And if you drive or walk, you hike maybe this afternoon, you get thirsty, right? What if there is no water source around you? 
you're in a desert. Like, for example, this is a picture, by the way, in a land in Egypt, when it gets very hot and there is no water, you walk around most plants like this. Looks dry. Doesn't, isn't, doesn't look good, right? So imagine if you are walking in a desert with 120 degrees and there is no water source. You are thirsty. In fact, our friends, Muslims, at that month, like today, for example, they are fasting. All months they are fasting from early morning to evening, from sunrise to sunset. And they don't eat or drink. And right now in Egypt, it's 100, maybe almost 100 now, all day long. They have to work, walk, and stuff, but they cannot even drink water. Thirst. How is the feeling of your thirsty? How do you feel, you know? Physical, you feel uncomfortable, right? But now, spiritually, the question, are you thirsty spiritually? Are you ready to receive the living water of God? So this is a water of thirst. Let us look at the good picture. The same land, you know, when they start to do water, it gets a water machine and but a lot of water looks different, right? Looks green and beautiful. This how is your life away from Christ. When you are thirsty, your life looks like this, dry. It's not good, right? But when you come to Christ, your life looks green and good. So are you ready to accept the invitation? So who are invited this morning? You and me and everyone this morning is invited for the living water. Are you ready to come and receive this kind of water? Let us look to the benefits of drinking water. Uh, first, physically improve physical performance, right? When you drink water, you look good. Second, it helps you to lose weight, boost your mood. I don't know if you experience that. When you're really thirsty, you feel moody, right? You feel uncomfortable. Maybe here is a challenge. I don't know if you really experience the true thirst or not. Because as long as you feel thirsty, you have your water, water bottle, or you just go to the nearest store. But if you are in a desert, experience the true thirst, you'll experience these things. Also, post your brain power. You cannot think good. So, waters are very, and prevent headaches, by the way. I know you have got advice, said, oh, if you are, th you are having headache, just drink more water. Away from Christ, you get many headaches, right? Yes. We, I believe most of us experience that. When you just res do, uh, refuse receiving the water from God, you'll have other issues in your life. Then you realize you are very thirsty. Your life looks dry, and you need to ba come back to drink some water. It's very important to receive that water. I'll share with you a story about a theology student who is studying theology. And I just graduated last week, so God's good. You know, I finished my master, so, so I feel for him, you know. So... That student came and asked his teacher and told him a question. Say, teacher, how can I truly find God? He's been studying and searching, and I cannot find God. Finding reasons, you know. Sometimes we give reasons why we cannot find God. As if God somewhere else and we cannot reach out to him. The teacher took him and said, okay, follow me. He took him to the river and asked the student to impress under the water. And then he put his hand on the head of the student under the water for a few seconds. Then the students start to feel uncomfortable and start to feel aching and he's lacking of oxygen and things are not good with him. Finally, the teacher released his hand and let the student just go out of the water. So the student was breathing hard, you know, has lungs ache, and just really needs some air, you know, oxygen. The teacher waited for a few moments. 
Then he told the student, said, when you desire God as truly as you desire to breathe the air you just pressed, then you shall find God. I like that, you know, because uh, there is no excuse for us. You know, there is the living water, it's everywhere. But we choose. That's why the Lord is giving us the invitation today. He said, Come, who are thirst, come to me. So you need to ask yourself, Are you thirsty this morning? In fact, thirst is one of the most powerful spiritual symbols in all our scriptures. As dehydration draws us the whole of our physical being as longing of water. So water is very important. As uh, in Psalms says, as a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. Also in Psalms, another Psalm say, I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a perished land. So, are we thirsty for the Lord today? That's what we need to ask, you know. So when you go out, maybe planning to hike this afternoon, and you get physically thirsty, remember that you need also to drink from the living water. I mean, in John chapter 7, we read 37 and 38, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will follow rivers of living water. Right? Amen? So you need to receive that water. And before you share your water, you have to receive it first. So... How is our spiritual life with Jesus Christ? So water is life, and God controls the waters as well. So today, as you are coming to worship the Lord, are you thirsty? Are you, thir you have thirst in your heart? Your heart feels like brown grass, you know? In summer, you make sure you water your grass. If you leave it for a few weeks, what it looks like? Dry. Dry, looks brown. That's why in a desert, you don't see green trees, you know? So you make sure you water it. How is your life today with Christ? You know, if you leave it, it looks like your brown grass in the lawn. It's not good. It doesn't look attractive and looks weak. Your spiritual life away from Christ it, if you are away from Christ, you look brown as well. So you need to water your spiritual life. Sometimes if there is brown grass it, because it hasn't rained for a long time. A lot of old hopes have dried up. Dreams have waited and lost, almost died. Dead end the streets again and again. So if we keep following all these things, we are away from Christ. That's why the Lord is calling you today. Come. So who invited? Everyone who is thirst, come. It's an open invitation for all of us. As the Lord says, today, you are a candidate for drinking water. That's why the Bible says, again in Isaiah, say, everyone, it said everyone, right? Who is thirst, come to the waters. Come to the waters. So this was invitation for everyone. In fact, if you notice in verse 1, Isaiah 55, verse 1, it has two parts here. First one, it says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you ha have no money, come buy and eat. Who? Who don't have money, right? Which is bankrupt, broke. So spiritually away from Christ. So if you think that you are a sinner, this is an invitation for you. If you think you are terribly commit all kinds of sins and your life is terrible, this is an invitation for you. 
But the second verse, second part of the verse says, yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Then verse two, why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what is not satisfied? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. So, yes, this is the second part, self-sufficient. So first part of the verse, verse 1 in Isaiah 55, for those who are sinners. And we are, right? Sinners. But he, he means more about people really commit all kinds of sins. The invitation for these people. If you don't have money, which is your spiritual life is broke, just the invitation for you. So the Lord is calling you today. The second part says self-sufficient, which is if you have money, if you have all the riches, still the invitation is for you. Right? The invitation for you. So the Lord is saying, hmm, I know you know the Bible very well. You know it from beginning to the end. You know, I tell you something. Satan knows the Bible very well, right? But his choice is not following the, what's in the Bible. But he knows the Bible. He memorizes the Bible. So we could be, say, God, we don't need your invitation because we're already here, right? So maybe you think you are in the church now. So you don't need God's invitation. So you know the Bible very well. You know the commandments. You know everything. But the Bible says this is for you as well. It's an invitation. I mean, that's why the Lord is calling you to receive the blessings of waters. So the Lord's calling you to, re if you open with me on uh, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Zechariah 10, verse 1. The Lord is calling you, if you need to accept the invitation, says, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for every one. What the Lord say? Just ask, right? So you know, you remember Hagar when she was caving from Abraham, and she was very thirst with her son, Ishmael, and she was disappointed. She put him away because he's dying of thirst, and she was not happy. The angel came, you know, she was praying, and he brought for her water she can drink. So maybe your spiritual life is dry. What do you need to do? Ask from the Lord, right? Say, Lord, bring all kind of rain in my life so I can receive all these blessings. So, also in Isaiah 44, Isaiah 44, verse 3, the Bible says, Isaiah 44, verse 3, for I will pour water on him who is thirst and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit in your descendants and my blessings in your offspring. The Lord promised that he will bring all kinds of waters. All we need to do, just ask the Lord. Amen? Just ask him and he will bring all kinds of waters on ice. Who can ask the Lord? Our, another verse in Joel, uh, chapter 2, verse, I believe, 12. Uh, we'll just do it later, maybe. So that verse speaks about two things here. Verse 1, who are thirst and bank corrupt. Second one, who have the money, have everything, but they still need the invitation, Right? I tell you the parable of the prodigal son, the lost son. A man had two sons, right? The younger son decided to leave his dad. 
even though he had received all the education, like his brother and everything, but he decided to get his inheritance and try the world, you know? I need to try, like everyone. He took his money, and what did he do with it? He misused it, wasted it, that's right. He misused it. And he lost all his money. What happened after that? Remember? Pause here. This could be me and you sometimes, right? Because we know the Bible very well. I know the Bible, the commandments of the Bible. I know the orders of God. But then I shut my mind and say, Lord, I need to take a break from you. Then I go and try. Then I find myself what? Dry. Right? Very dry. What will I do? Is it the end there? God's good, you know. God continue. Christ continues the story. It did not end here with the prodigal son be lost and give up. No. He started to remind himself that his father told him, my house is open for you. The, still, the invitation is still open to come back. I tell you, the Lord is telling you today, the invitation is open for you. Even though if you went astray, he's calling you to come back. What the prodigal son did, he came to his sense because his mind said, oh, I'm thirsty, I need to go and receive more water from my dad. He went back to his dad. How did he look? Did he come back as he left? No. He went as a prince, he came as papa, you know, that doesn't look good. So anyway, he looks, smelled bad because he worked with not good animals. So he's smelly. He had no shoes, represents to be a slave, right? He lost his ring, he lost everything, and he came. How did his dad accept? His bank corrupt, by the way, right? So that verse one says, bank corrupt, spiritually in a bad situation. How did his dad respond to him? Did his dad say, oh, it's too late, you smell bad, you are a slave, just go away. Did he kick him out? He accepted him in. I tell you, the Lord today accepts you in. He's calling you to come to him. And his dad, what did he give him shoes to tell him, you are no more a slave. The Lord, when you come to him, he will free you whatever sin you have. If you are under drugs, under alcohol, whatever the addiction you have, the Lord will free you when you come. So give him a shoes to free him. He gave him a ring to wear, right? Tell him that you are the son of king. You are my son today. And give him a rope, which is, represents the rope of righteousness. He accepted him. Today, if you are spiritually bankrupt, the Lord is calling you to come to him. But the story does not end here. Because we'll finish with verse 1. Come to verse 2. He had another brother, right? His brother, older brother, what happened to him? He was good, according to the story in the beginning, right? He stayed with his dad. He knew the commandments. He worked. He was doing whatever asked to do. But what happened when his brother came? How was his feelings? Jealous? Angry? How come you accept sinners? I've been working for you for ages. I've been doing your commandments and I've been doing everything. I'm obeying you. But why did you do that? He was angry at his dad. This is what verse 2 says, you know. Read it again just to remind you. In Isaiah 55. It says, for those who have, 55 verse 2 says, why do you spend money for what's not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what's good and let your soul delight in its abundance. So the Lord says, mm -mm, that other son was not truly worshiping God, right? He, he reminded me with the Pharisee. When he came to Christ and prayed, he said, God, I dress good to the church, so number one. Second, I give you my tithe. Then I fast. 
I read my Bible. You don't need anything from me. I don't need you. I'm doing, so I, I think I'm good. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not like that bad sinner, you know. This is what the protocol, the older brother dealt with his younger brother. I mean, so what kind of group are we are? But by the way, the Christ is giving invitation to who? To everyone. To both. To the one who is old and to the big one as well. To the prodigal son who is lost and God gave him the invitation. And also to the older brother, God is giving them the invitation. Today, if you think you know God's work, God's word, and you are doing good stuff, the Lord is calling you again, right? What do we need to do when we come to Christ? The verse now in Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. We need truly, when we come to Christ, we need faithfully to come to him. Come to Christ as you are. And this is the invitation the Lord is calling us. You know, the thirsty, so there are two things here. The thirsty who are broke and cannot pay money. And the thirsty who have money, but they misusing that money. Are we misusing God's word today? The Lord is calling us. Then our second point is, what are we offered? So now there is an invitation. The Lord say, come, if you are thirsty, come to me. What the Lord will give me? If you go to Middle East, and if someone invite you to their house, what do you expect? A big feast. This is a culture, you know? They make sure when you come to their house, there is a nice big table with all kind of food and all kind of dessert, something good. So naturally, when someone say, I invite you to my house, you know what are you going to be offered. What about the Lord Jesus Christ? When he said, come to me who are thirst. In fact, we are offered three things here in uh, verse 1. Say, we offered Water, wine, and milk. As the Bible says, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and who, who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. So, first thing is to receive is water, right? And represents refreshments, life. I believe uh, Pastor Jose is the last series he was preaching about the Samaritan woman at the well, right? And you have been studying this very well. So you know the importance of the spiritual water, right? It's life. It's life. The Lord saying, said, if you come to me, I'll give you your life back. Because with sin and Satan, you lost your life. But with Christ, you'll get your life back. Then, and also in Psalms, uh, 23, as we know, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord leads me to all this. So water. Second thing is milk. What does milk represent? Food, right? Food. So we need the Lord. First thing, he will give us life. Then he gives us the word, right? The God's word. So that's why we need to study, spend time in God's word, just to learn more about him. Then he gives us wine. And what does wine represent? Joy, right? Spiritual joy. So simply God saying, come to me. I will give you life. I will give you the spiritual food. I will give you the spiritual joy. Because I know we sometimes we try to search for joy somewhere else, right? You get home, you are depressed, frustrated, disappointed, and you look some, find ways how to make you happy and laugh. 
But the Lord say, I am going to offer all that for you. So are you willing to accept that invitation so you can receive all that in John chapter 4, verse 14, saying, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing upon into everlasting life. So the Lord promised he will give us as long as we ask all this from the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord says, come to me and I'll give you all this kind of water. And if you continue in verse 3, the Bible says, he will, as he did the covenant with, with David, he will, he's making a covenant with us. Like a promise, the Lord says, if you come to me, you will have life, you will have joy, and you will have the spiritual food as well. Then our third point, we'll end with it. What are we told to get these benefits? What do we need to do? You know, simply is come, buy, eat, and enjoy God's word. You know, if you, in these verses are 12 points here. Number one, say, come, everyone who thirsts, come to waters. All you need just to come. Take the chance. Then number two, and he who has no money, just come, keep repeating. Buy and eat. Come, the Lord says, buy wine and milk without money and without price, the Lord saying. Then why do you spend your money for what is which is not bread? Why do you waste your life, the Lord says? This is the true living word of God. Then number eight says, and eat what is good. You know, there is, we know that Satan at the end of the day is trying to bring confusion for us, right? And try to get some stuff from outside. So the Lord says, he knows, and even Isaiah, so, and eat what is good, which is the word of God, and delight yourselves and rich food. Then incline your ear and come to me. Hear, as the Lord says. So the Lord, all you need to do, just to follow Isaiah 55, 1 to 3, how you can come to the Lord. So this morning, are we ready to come to the Lord? Are we, are we ready to accept his commandments? We'll just end with that verse, Psalms 16 verse 11, it says, You will show me the path of my life in your presence in fullness of joy. At your right hand are pressures forever. You need to ask yourself today, are you thirsty? I invite you today, if you have been away from Christ, and spiritually, if you are thirsty, this is the moment you can come to the Lord. Just come to him and pray to him. Just give your time. Go back and read Isaiah 55. And say, Lord, I'm willing to come to you. My life looks dry far from you. May the Lord help us so we can take the step to come to Christ. Amen. Well, our deacons come as we lift the morning's tithe and offering. Lord, we do thank you for an opportunity to return a faithful tithe and, and bring an offering. We ask that you will bless our gifts. In Jesus' name, amen.